What's going on everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you my first impressions of Ghostwire Tokyo, which as of the time of this video, I actually launched just a few hours ago. Ghostwire Tokyo is a first person open world adventure in which we take the role of Akito, who through some circumstances is basically the only living-ish person in Tokyo, as the rest of the town has been covered in a fog which has turned most people into spirits. As such, we find ourselves fighting a lot of spirits through our connection to a spirit that bonded with us named KK. Now, beyond that, I'll be avoiding spoilers, but that's pretty much what you learn right at the beginning of the game. Now, beyond that, I like to review games after 100%, which takes a while, so naturally I like to release these first impressions videos and talk about a game after I've played it for a little while. Now, on that front, I would be very surprised if this game takes a very long time to 100% because some of my first impressions from this title are that there is a ton of collectible stuff. However, pretty much all of it seems to be marked on a map and a very clear indication of what you found. And it's all kind of broken down by area as well, which is honestly going to make collecting all of this stuff pretty easy. And while a lot of what is collectible definitely seems to be very helpful, actually, you can collect the spirits of the human beings who were turned into spirits, and you can basically convert that into experience, which will then give you level ups, which then helps your progression. You can find these statues that you can pray to that will increase your ether or your ability to use your ranged elemental attacks that KK gives you access to. So while the collectibles do have a purpose, there is nonetheless a lot of them. So that's probably something people should know going into it. But beyond that, the atmosphere of the game is pretty incredible, actually. Walking through Tokyo and it's dark and rainy, it seems to be perpetual nighttime combined with the kind of Japanese take on the spirit world, these spirits attacking you, the atmosphere is really something else to take in. Now, combat-wise, we see ourselves kind of shifting through a few different styles, if you will, sort of melee attacks, and then we have our ethereal weaving, which is our sort of ranged attacks that we can make, and then you actually get a sort of spirit bow that you can snipe people with from a pretty good distance. And while the combat has so far been pretty visually impressive, it doesn't really leap off the page in terms of its mechanics by any means. For the most part, it just kind of feels like a almost hack and slash in that you're just spamming a lot of abilities at these spirits that are attacking you. And each spirit does kind of have different things that it will do, so you have to mix it up. But so far, the combat has seemed pretty basic. Now, progression-wise, there's a lot to progress. So you have all your ethereal abilities, your consumables, etc. And all of these will have like skill upgrades that as you level your character up, you'll get access to skill points that let you upgrade all this stuff. So there might be some more interesting variations to come, but so far the combat is very standard, for lack of a better word. It's not bad, but it definitely doesn't really leap out at you as anything genuinely unique besides the visuals associated with it, which by themselves are actually pretty cool which I would say kind of bleeds into my overall impression of the title so far, and that is to say that none of what I've run into mechanically is particularly unique to this game by any means. The overall vibe and the setting are definitely pretty awesome, actually. There's a lot of horror elements, as you might imagine, with all the spirit world stuff going on, and then again, just kind of walking through these rainy streets with these spirits attacking you really does lend itself to immersion in the game, even if the systems themselves aren't particularly unique. Now, on a sort of different level in terms of first impressions, I will say the game does have a lot of fantastic options in terms of what you can customize. For instance, one of the things you can choose is the subtitle language as opposed to the language you're actually hearing. So the game is obviously set in Tokyo, which means there's a very Japanese-heavy influence. The game defaults to the subtitles being in English, but all the voices you hear will be Japanese. However, you can customize that in the menus to where if you wanted to, you could hear it in a different language or even see the subtitles in a different language, and I like that they decoupled those two things as it really helps you understand what's going on while also setting the mood really well. The game also has adjustable font sizes, etc. And while overall that's like little stuff, it's nonetheless stuff you don't see in a lot of other games, so I like to appreciate it when I do see it. But without rambling on for too long, my overall first impressions after the first few hours with the title are that while, again, none of the systems really jump out at me as unique, they nonetheless 
manage to do those same old things with a very unique visual aspect to them. Because on one hand, yeah, I'm cleansing these gates, which effectively act as towers, which allow you to kind of explore certain areas. And then it kind of reveals things on the map that you can go check out, etc. So in and of themselves, again, not particularly unique. However, they do present those things with a very cool atmosphere. But there you go, guys. There is my first impressions of Ghostwire Tokyo. Overall, looks like it's going to be a very fun title, albeit a bit stock standard. So it's all of that said, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you liked the video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, stick around for the review after 100% when I really dive in and dig into this thing. But regardless of any of that, truly, thank you again. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.